Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, depending on when you're watching this. How's it going, guys? So, as you see, I'm back in my college dorm room, which can only mean one thing. It's time to get really sweaty because this building doesn't have air conditioning and I turn my fans off just so the mic on my GoPro can hear me better. So what's the first video I'm going to be making back in this very hot, hot, hot dorm room? We are going to be talking about something I've been doing for years, specifically been doing this type of thing for three years now, and that is how to record your own music in a college dorm setting. Like I said, this is my third year in college, so I've gathered quite a bit of knowledge living next to neighbors, trying to be quiet, living next to people across the street, or across the hall from you, who could probably hear your conversation because there are cracks in the door when you're making videos, probably think you're crazy, but that's besides the point. This video is basically a guide for all you college guitarists who want to record music in your dorm room. So something important to keep in mind throughout this whole video is that this is my own personal way on how I record music. This isn't the be all end all gospel truth on how to record, Many different people use different recording techniques and that's perfectly okay. Find what thinks sounds best and keep sticking to that. But like I said, this is my own personal way and how I record music. And this isn't a in-depth review on how to use anything because that would probably take an hour for this whole video and I'm trying to keep this under 15 to 20 minutes. But, so keep in mind, this is my own personal way on how I record music, and this isn't a demo on how to use such and such, such and such, and this guitar. Materials! What are you going to need to start making music in your dorm room? Well, the first one's kind of important. You need a laptop or a PC of some sort. Personally, I use this MacBook Air, but you can use whatever you can get your hands on. You don't need a Mac to make music. You got a Chromebook, HP laptop, regular PC, or a whole custom-built thing. Those will work out just fine. On your computer, you need to install something called a DAW or DAW. And what a DAW basically is, is that's where you record your whole project, that's where you mix everything. Basically, DAW is life. Some of the DAWs that you've probably heard of before are Pro Tools and Logic, but those can get quite pricey after a while. And after all, we're college students, we don't want to spend a lot of money. I mean, you have your laptop and that's good enough. So, let's take a look at some of the free DAWs out there. If you have any Apple products, you have one yourself, you have GarageBand. But if you have a regular PC and you can't get GarageBand, there's still many free DAWs out there. Pro Tools actually make one called Pro Tools First. Studio One has Studio One Prime. I believe there's one called Cakewalk. But personally, I use Ableton Live Lite. That's your Andrew Wong mixes in, well, he mixes in like the full Ableton version, and I use the free version, and I can tell you that it's great and does what I need to do. So once we got our whole computer and DAW situation sorted out, we moved to the world of audio interfaces. That's what we plug our guitar bass into to record. And there are many, many audio interfaces out there like there are DAWs. If you watch Music Is Win, he uses this thing called the Apollo Twin. That's basically what all the big guitar YouTubers use. And the one he has is about $700, and the cheapest one that Apollo make is $700. That's about three semesters worth of books for us, so we need to take a look at cheaper alternatives. So personally, what I use is this Focusrite Scarlet Solo. It has one spot for a mic and one instrument jack, and it's about $100. But certainly, this isn't the only thing out there. Personas make a $100 audio interface also, and that has a mic and two instrument jacks. Behringer make a thing that's 50 bucks, I believe it's called Euphoria, and I don't know how well it works, but it's 50 bucks. If you want a cheap alternative, go with that. It's a new day, the other shirt was soaked, and I thought I'd let this video go overnight to see if it cooled down a little bit. Well, it didn't. That's why I have a new shirt, that's why my hair is styled back up, but let's continue right with this video. When I make a song, the first thing I work on is the drum track. This is where taking advantage of a friend would be nice, especially if they play drums and record drums. Now they might want like promotional material, like you spread their name out, or they might want paid. If you're willing to do that, that's great, but if you're not willing to pay them, back to the drawing board. And in a dorm room, you can't fit a full drum set in here because you get a lot of noise complaints. But screw those guys, am I right? And what if you don't play drums, then you're really screwed. 
This is where uh, the internet becomes your friends. On YouTube you can type in free drum tracks and there is plenty to go off of. You can go to Google and type in for like a drum machine. But personally, I use a plugin called Easy Drummer 2. You might have heard of this, it's by Tune Tracks. Devin Townsend uses it a lot, and that's where I make all my drum tracks at. But of course, you can always find a way of programming your own drums. When I first got Ableton Live, I did it because the focus rate came with some drum sounds. So I was like, yeah, let's make a drum track out of this, and oh my gosh, it took days to finish the song and I didn't even complete the song just because I was so sick of it by making the drum tracks. Now like I said this is a demo of the whole Easy Drum program but I'm going to show you how I would use it. So if I have a drum idea in mind I go to the search bar and then just do the tap to find so I click tap to find, put my drum beat in, hit search and all the results would come up for whatever it is. Like we have a whole bunch of fills, we actually have a verse here. And I usually listen to it to hear how it sounds, and then if I like that, I copy down here, go to Song Creator, and I get a whole song file. And as you see, this is one I did earlier. And it goes right down to where it says Source File, and it comes up with a whole bunch of drum sounds for you to come up with. So let's say you want to start with an intro. That's nice. Now how does first five sound? Okay, that could work and it gives you a whole bunch of stuff. You certainly don't have to go in this order. Like you can use a drum chorus as your verse. You can use a verse as your bridge. Like for instance, all the way back here, I used verses and choruses for a guitar solo. And this is a track that I've been working on for a while. And it's a whole bunch of dragging and dropping and a whole bunch of construction. Like I have a fill here. That's basically how I would use it. You can also change the drum sounds up in the very top, and you have two between two sets, your modern sets and your vintage sets. Both of them sound great. And then that's how I would use Easy Drummer. If you want this program, it's about 150 bucks, but I have seen it go on sale for about a hundred. Alright, so once we have our drum setting made in Easy Drummer, we are going to go down to track. Wave, you can also do it as many, but I personally do it in Wave, 16-bit, I'm just going to do this as demo, and for easier for me finding it, we're going to put right in our documents. Save, and it'll export, and like I said, we're using Easy Drummer in Ableton, that's because that's what I have on my MacBook. And we're going to Finder, we're going to pull it up, we're going to Documents, and we're going to pull Demo, and we're going to put it right into Ableton Live. I usually like to do this like a measure two, that way I have an A clicks, and that way I'm in. That's usually what I do, and when you put tracks in Ableton, it will have it as warp. You want to unclick the warp, and it will usually make your track a bit longer, because sometimes if you don't do it, it'll, you'll be listening, <laughs> you're going to be playing your stuff. And like halfway through the song, it will just get super fast, so make sure to turn the warp off. Once you have your drums in whatever DAW you're using, the next step is to record guitar and bass. Whatever your order you want to do them, that's fine. I know people who record guitar, then bass. I know people who record bass, then guitar. I've done it both ways, and I see opportunities for them both being done the way they are. And for this part, we can't be in this dorm. It's too hot for this, and I have none of my gear here. So let's take a walk, shall we? All right, so here we are in the lovely air-conditioned building. Let's continue on with the video. So if you're like me, you forgot your bass at home. And up on the hill when you're making your drums, I said that it's nice to have friends who play drums. Well, it's also nice to have friends who are bass players because, like I said, if you forgot your bass or you just don't want to record bass track, they can record the bass track for you or they can let you borrow their bass. Thanks, Teddy. For the bass players of you asking, this is a carbon six-string bass. What model is it? I'm not quite sure. Teddy, if you're watching this video, why don't you leave some specs down in the description below. So as you see right here, we have the bass all hooked up to the Focusrite Scarlet Solo going into Ableton Live. And as you can hear, you can probably hear it more acoustic than you can from the whole computer system. And let me show you how to fix that real quick. If you have a Focusrite Scarlet Solo like I do, the first thing you want to make sure is that when you plug your guitar or bass in, is that this little switch down here is set to instrument and not line. The reason for that is because if you put it on line, the signal will become much weaker compared to the instrument side. And I'm not sure if this setting is on the Euphoria by Behringer or the Personas, but it is on the Focusrites. 
Next thing you want to do, and this is on the Behringer, and this is on the Persona, and it's on most audio interfaces, is you're going to start cranking this little knob right here. And that increases the signal from of your guitar or bass once more. So if we just look at it right now, you can see there's barely anything there. I think there's like one blink of green, that's it. So we want to start cranking it up. Let's see how it sounds at 12 o'clock. See right there, it was green and it went a bit a little bit orange. And when it goes orange or a red color, that means it's signal overload and you're gonna get a lot of distortion. Like if we put it all the way up. If that's the tone you're looking for, that's great for you. However, that's not what we're looking forward to do today. So we're gonna have it set to like 11 o'clock-ish. Once you've done that, you're ready to record your bass. I record my bass just going straight into the focus right, and then if I want any post effects like some sort of amp sim, I'll put it on after. But for now, we're just recording direct, and once I, I talk about an amp sim right now, but I'll show you more about that later. But anyway, let's hit our record button, and let's go. Important to have the metronome on so you keep it time, obviously, and let's go. Once you've got your bass tracks done, it's time to move over to a guitar. And let me just say, it feels really weird moving to a six string bass over to a six string guitar. This just feels puny now. So normally this is where people would go mic up their guitar amplifier and plug it into their audio interface. But we're in a dorm room and we can't crank the guitar amplifier for the best tone available because noise complaints and you might get a fine because of it. So we need to find a whole way around the guitar amplifier problem. Now, I could probably get away with it in this building today because it's a Sunday, no one's here, and I can crank my orange micro dark, but we're going to avoid the whole guitar amplifier world at the moment, and we're going to move to a thing called amp sims. An amp sim is exactly what the name implies. It's a guitar amplifier simulation on your computer. And all you need to do is plug your guitar into your audio interface, go to whatever DAW you're using, and go under the plugin of whatever amp sim you download. If you have GarageBand, you don't need to worry about downloading anything because you already have amp sims on there. Most of them sound okay, but if you do a lot of tweaking, you can make them sound pretty nice. Some of the amp sims that I recommend are PV Revolver, they make some really good ones. There's a couple of free ones if you do a quick Google search, but the ones that I recommend the most is Bias FX. That's what I've been using for about a year now and I love it. I love the fact that you can go into the Tone Cloud and download tones made by other people. For instance, Fluff made some tone prints that you can download. Someone made a Prince Purple Rain tone that you can download and you can go into those tones further and tweak it to however you personally like it. That's what I recommend the most, especially when it's on sale for 50 bucks. When you download whatever guitar sim you're gonna be using, make sure you download the VST, that way it goes right into your DAW, and for some reason it's not installed, just do a quick Google search and that way you can figure out how to install it in your DAW. Once we have that all hooked up, it's time to record. So I'm gonna do that real quick. You need to do nothing special. Just make sure that whatever your audio interface is, it's set into the green. Can't stress that enough because we don't want to over distort the tone like we're going to do now because the song requires distortion. We don't want to over distort it. And yeah. Is recording on a keyboard more your thing? Don't worry, I got you covered also. It's basically the same steps as you would record on a guitar or bass. First thing you want to do is you want to look for your headphones jack on your keyboard and it should look like it takes an instrument cable much like a guitar or bass would. And what you want to do is you want to plug an instrument cable through your headphone jack into your audio interface and set your levels and you should be able to hear your keyboard through your DAW considering you're recording straight from the headphones. Control your levels, you might need some post effects to make it sound a tiny bit better, but you shouldn't need an amp sim, maybe just some EQ, maybe just some reverb, and you should be fine, and you should be ready to go. So as you hear right there, our whole song is made. Now we have to do a thing called mix. 
And this is kind of important because this is what makes the song, if your song's mixed badly, then it's not going to sound so good. Personally, on my end, my mixes could be a tiny bit better, but the main thing I'm going to show you today is how to control the volumes and make things sound better than what they are now. And for this next part, we're going to go back to my dorm because my GoPro is dying along with my MacBook. My MacBook was just at 7% and then went up to 9%. It's not even plugged in. I don't know how that's possible, but lucky for us, we don't need the use of any more instruments. But we have to go to a hot, sweaty dorm. Fun. Now that we're back in the dorm room, it's time to mix this bad boy. And when you mix, you want to have a good pair of headphones, preferably ones that go over top of the ears so you can hear the song a lot better and, and then you mix better. Yeah, you can use earbuds, but these are ideal. But just so you can hear what I'm doing today, we're not going to be using headphones, we're going to be using some external speakers, because on my MacBook the whole right entire side speaker doesn't work. So we're going from external speakers, we're going to take a look at the song which you can see on the screen, and let's just hear how the same loop sounds on these speakers compared to what we listened to earlier. So the first thing that I get right away is that there is a lot of bass, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the bass down, and on your DAW you should have a mixer, go down the volume, and then just turn that bad boy down. Let's put it like 6 down 6 dB. And then of course you can go down to whoever your guitar is, and then you can go further in depth and you can turn that stuff up like we're going to be doing now. Alright, that's sounding a lot better. Let's turn down the bass just a tiny bit more. And that's a little bit too much bass loss for me, so we can go back to about 6. And then something I do quite often is I usually pan one instrument more so to the left and one more so to the right. And usually that is the bass goes 20 to the right, and then the guitar goes 20 to the left. Why I do it this way, I don't know. That's just how I roll. Let's go back. And there we already have a slightly better mix. We're going to turn the guitar up just a tiny bit more. In fact, let's turn down the drums just a tiny bit also. Actually, now they sound, think of it, the drums sound fine just where they are. Turn the guitar up to about three. And then from there you can go further in depth. If you want to say you change up what the drum sounds, you go, you can go and add like your own little plugins and effects. Like my computer comes with a whole bunch of audio units, which you can see right here, comes with a whole bunch of reverbs. It also just comes with some straight audio reverbs. You have some EQs, compressors, like we add this brick wall compressor onto the drums. This is how it sounds. With it off. So I make some better impact. And with this, we can actually turn down the e the volume on this because when you add the EQ or the compressor, it goes a bit too loud. So let's turn it down to that. That's about sounding how it was. Let's go up to one dB. In sounds completely better already and then as you see we also have some beat repeaters some EQ reverb with and they have some really good reverbs in Ableton uh, I have some soft tube EQs some positive grid stuff in here uh, tune track gave me an easy drummer some great stuff there's a EQ, like bleh. there's so much stuff that comes in here that I'm having a tough time speaking but basically, that's how I mix a song, in which you're going to hear how this sounds right now.
But Justin, what if I want to record vocals? Well, that's a very good question, and I recommend you get a USB mic of some sort. They're fairly cheap, and whatever you get, get a condenser mic and get a pop filter. That way you avoid the when you speak. Uh, some of the ones that I recommend are the CAD audio microphone that I have. I'll put a link of that in the description below if it's still available, if it's still a thing. Another really good company is Blue. They make the Snowball microphone and I've seen people use that and it's very good. Behringer make a USB condenser mic. Audio Technica make a USB condenser mic. But if you get an audio interface and you want to put a microphone through the audio interface, that's fine. Just get a regular microphone. But if you have the budget, go for an SM7B by Sure. But I, you're a college student, you probably don't have $400 lying around. After all, that's two semesters worth of books. I mean, if you can get an SM7B, great, go for it. You don't want to get an SM57 for vocals, because that's just not how you use an SM57. Audio Technica also make a large diaphragm condenser mic, the AT2020, that has a pop filter right in it. Go ahead and get that. I. From what the reviews show, I recommend it now because it has four and a half stars. So if you're gonna get a regular condenser mic, go out and get that. If you want to get a USB microphone, go for the blue snowball. And the important tip about recording vocals is that you don't want to be in a room with too much reverb. That will cause a bad sound to go into your microphone. That way your vocal track is pretty eh. What I do to fix this is, like, if we're doing it in my dorm room like we are now, I would put a comforter over top of whatever mic I am using and sing right into it. And I am holding the comforter the entire time, but the results are worth it. And I try to stand while I do vocals, so what I'll do is I'll open the closet, put the laptop and the microphone in there, hold the comforter right above the door and sing because singing stands, you want to stand up while you sing, good posture and all of that hunk of junk. And then also with vocals, you can put compressors, EQs, other post effects on to make it sound good. Well, anyway, guys, there you have it. That's how I make music in my dorm room. Hopefully this is a nice guide for all you college musicians out there. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment down in the comment section below, whatever you want today. Share this video with your musician friends, your musician friends in college, your non-musician friends, your non-musician friends in college, your doctor, family, dog, your cat, whatever you can share it to, share it, go ahead. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button because I hear that is important now and I will see you next Monday with another video. Goodbye and good night. Time to turn the fans on. This feels great.